The Louisiana Christian University football team is now 4-0 for the 2023 season, following a 60-14 win over Wayland Baptist this past Saturday at Wildcat Stadium. Welcome on in, everyone. A chance for us again to talk with the head coach of the LCU Wildcats. That is Drew Maddox. Drew, thank you again for being with us today. Oh, it's good, good to be here, Al. Yeah. So that was a game where you had a huge first quarter and really kind of got up on them and really never looked back. Is the hardest thing of a game like that keeping the team's momentum and not letting up? Yeah, I mean, it's just human nature. You know, it was 46 to nothing at halftime. And, uh, you know, that was, that was kind of the, the, the speech to the team after. There was, I, just, I just want us to finish right. You know, we, yeah. we shouldn't, you know, it's like I always pick on Coach Saban. You watch Nick Saban and he's always talking about, but I get it. Like, I get it. The more I get into coaching, you know, it's just don't look at the scoreboard. Let's just play as well as we can and make sure that everybody's on the field when they're supposed to be on the field and make sure we're doing the right things at all times during the game. And so uh, it was a good lesson. It was a good lesson for us to, to you know, be that high up, that far up, and, and try to figure out how to finish a game the right way. So It was a game, too, where your passing attack really put up some big numbers and, and really with not even that many attempts, 360 yards passing, 46 points, as you mentioned, in the first half. Sal finished the game with 369 yards passing. Sammy Feaster ended up in the game with, all in the first quarter, 195 yards and two touchdowns. So what was working early in the game? Because you had some really big plays. You know, I think the, the biggest deal for us that we're good at right now is we're running the ball very well. And so everybody sees that on film. And so you have to have a good plan. Like, I've had to do it. You know, we go up against our offense all the time, too. And you have to have a good plan on stopping the run. And a lot of times when you when you do that, it open up the pass. And so we kind of figured that at some point people would sell completely out to stop the run, and it's kind of that's what happened. And uh, you know, Sammy acted like he was going to block and just took off running, and, and there he is wide open. So uh, and that's kind of what happened a couple times, you know. And so hopefully we can get that, you know, uh, repeatedly. But we'll see. We'll see. Sure. And then kind of conversely, uh, you've been getting such great games out of Briscoe. He kind of got shut down, and you could tell they were yeah. keying on him. But as you said, you take advantage then with the passing game. So it shows what a dual threat this team is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with with Briscoe, you know, it, it really wasn't. He only had like five attempts for 20 yards or 25 yards or whatever. So he's still averaging right at five yards a pop. And But for, he's been averaging 12 or 15 yards, right. but, you know, so everybody. So he was still doing that. Same thing with Daylon Charles. Uh, but Sal, because of the way they were playing, ended up being our leading rusher, I think, as well. He probably could have rushed for even more if we needed him to. We didn't need him to. Uh, and, and maybe moving forward, we will. Uh, but, yeah, it's all open. I mean, it, it, the running game, the passing game, I knew, you know, Sal is very good. I've said this mm -hmm. since. You know, in the days of Dennis Dunn, when he got he would have got 55 times to throw the ball or whatever, he'd probably put up monster numbers. You know, it's just not the way that we the style that we want to play. Uh, but he's that good. He's that type of talent. Is, is a lot of those guys that have been before him here. Uh, and the part that he's better at is he can run the ball very well. Yes. Uh, he's a very good at run the ball. So he's all that. And so he really helped us out because they they came in deciding they were going to shut out the run and forsake the rest of it, and he showed them that he can make it a little worse maybe than what it was uh, if we would ran the ball on him all night. So uh, he kind of showed that, so that was a good thing. I think you're going to have to call Tavian Cunningham Mr. Efficient because he only touched the ball six times and had four touchdowns. Yeah, no, he's 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 been a great uh, addition. Like, not only that, as, as a human being, like he's a great guy. Hmm. And so I always say, you know, God blesses. It seems like God blesses those type of guys. He tries hard to practice. He works hard, and he's just trying to get it all. And so uh, for him to have that success, and uh, it's the team aspect that I'm probably the most pleased with. I mean, even like Briscoe and those guys, you don't realize a lot of times it's because they've tired the team out, and then <laughs> Tay gets in there and he has a great play and scores a touchdown. Well, those guys drove us down real close, you know. And, uh, and that's not always the case. He caught a, a great ball the other day, made two guys miss, and was off to the races. And so uh, he's really talented. But uh, the team aspect of everything is what, what we're the most excited about. They just they want to see each other win. They want to see each other do well, no matter who's in there. So. Yeah. On defense, I noticed in the first half especially, they were kind of running away from the side that Logan Brimmer plays. But Damari Weathersby had a huge first half in terms of tackles. So was that kind of a byproduct of them trying to go the opposite direction? Yeah, uh, part of that is they were uh, – the, what, what they put on the field is indicative to those safeties maybe making more tackles. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't in big sets uh, with, with fullbacks and, and all that. They were more in 10, 
10 personnel is what we call it, but two receiver sets. So when that happens, our, our safeties are going to fit. And so that means that, that it, DeMario and, and Tyron Young and those guys will make uh, more plays. And so, and that's kind of what was happening right there. Uh, you know, Brimmer ended up, I think, got a sack later on and had another tackle for, he had two tackles for a loss and his two, two tackles that he had. So, uh, and, and Tay, uh, Tay Elders came on and, and had a big game from the defensive line standpoint. And, uh, of course, Bubba and all those guys. But uh, anyways, yeah, they're, I don't know if they're running away from him more so. Just it's kind of the way it, it happened, to be honest with you. These last two games being blowouts is giving you a chance to kind of look at some of your younger players as well. And it's exciting to see what some of these guys are going to bring in the future. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I thought River came in and handled the offense really well. He ran for about 30 yards and he threw for about 30 yards and looked very settled the first couple of times he got in there. I didn't, you know, I didn't know if he looked settled, but it was good to see that. Uh, and then, you know, a couple other guys and all that. You just got to make sure that they're taking care of what they're supposed to take care of during the week as a whole, everybody. So we got to make sure that they're practicing hard like they're going to be the starters. I mean, that's what we want. That's what we built our program on. Next man up is what we always say. And so we got to make sure that they're practice, even though they're not the one, even though they're not going to get 70 of the of the reps, uh, of the 90 reps, they might get 10 or 15 or 20. And then the other night we were up so much that they got, they played half the game. Yeah. And so they have to make sure, and it was a difference. <laughs> it was a difference. And so we got to make sure that our execution and our preparation are good. You're getting a lot of people looking at you now in terms of rankings and things like that, up to number 27 in the NAIA poll, number 17 in the other poll. So that starts to create expectations. Is that a different thing for this team? Yeah, yeah, it, it, I mean, it is. The, just to be as candid as I can be, it is. Uh, it's something that we hadn't really crossed. Uh, and me, even as a head coach, I hadn't crossed it because when I we built the place I was at before, but right about the time we got good, I left mm -hmm. and came here. And so, and then we've been in building mode and last year we had success, but it was late. And so we didn't really have to fight all that because we just got better as the year went on. We ended up winning six, but uh, all that, yeah, I think. But the biggest deal is these players and, and, and their focus and, you know, they, they want to leave a legacy and they want to be good and they've practiced hard. I mean, it's it's been some of the best practices since I've been here. Right. And it's it's awesome because they're not entitled. That just means they're not an entitled team. They don't just think they can show up. And uh, that's kind of what we built it on. If we can remember what we built it on and where how we got here and we can stay doing that, then we'll be successful. And uh, and that, you know, as a, as a coach and as a guy that's preaching that, it makes me excited to uh, to see them do that. So it's it's we'll see we'll see the, you know the jury's still out on on uh on what will be and where we are but yeah it's definitely there's expectations now and i get them from everywhere you know grocery stores and <laughs> every place else so we'll see i'm sure the players are getting the same thing that's awesome so you've already been to oklahoma one time this year and now you get another long trip to oklahoma and this is going to be a huge game against oklahoma panhandle so Talk about the mindset going into this one, the road travel, but then also playing a quality, quality team. Yeah, so same thing as last time. We just got to make sure we, we prepare right, we travel right, we do all the little things in travel. There's so much that goes on to those the travel aspect of it. And last last time I thought we handled it pretty well at Langston, uh, which is a really good opponent. And uh, so hopefully we'll do the same thing again. It's a little further, three hours more or whatever this, this time around. Uh, but I think we'll, we'll be all right. But the biggest deal is we have to travel right, prepare ourselves right mentally and physically, make sure we're sleeping and eat, eating and drinking water and all that good stuff that we need to do. And uh, come out and try to beat a really good opponent that does a lot of stuff. I mean, they're, they line up all over the place. They're hard to, hard to, hard to block because you don't know where they're going to be. And uh, they do a really good job on their coverage uh, on the defensive side and the offensive side. they got a really good quarterback that's – it's very puts you puts you in a bind, especially our defense and the way we play it, because uh, we got to account for him at all times. And uh, so, anyways, it, it'll be a good opponent and it'll be a good game, and we're excited about it. And hopefully, get up there and uh, enact a little revenge. They're the last team, the last team that beat us, so we don't we don't really need to more. There hasn't been any more of a rally cry than that. I think it was there last year too. Yeah, right? yeah. For whatever reason, I've said this all year. You know, <laughs> the conference and their AD or whoever. But yeah. uh, anyway, so yeah, we'll hey. we'll do it again. I'm excited to go back up there. I want to. We want we want as a team to uh, to try to try to write that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that game will be six o'clock on Saturday in Goodwill, Oklahoma. Have a great trip. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. That's Drew Maddox. That's our cat chat with him. Wildcats again at Oklahoma Panhandle State coming up this Saturday. Thanks for watching. Calls up.